Web hosting can be scary for would-be web developers. There are so many options with different prices and specifications, some more technical other less. It is easy to get confused. With this video, I want to show you an easy way to publish the website using Wappler. Google Firebase hosting makes it really easy to get started and it has a very generous free tier called Spark Plan. Unfortunately, you can't run server-side languages as PHP and build complex backends. The server has no database server, nor does it have an application server. The good part is that Wappler is moving towards more client-side dynamic web apps and mobile apps. In other words, this will do just fine for the moment. To get started, we need to ensure that Node.js is installed on the local machine. For this, I choose System Check. Here I see that Node.js is missing. Wappler has provided a link to Node.js. Clicking on the link takes me to the Node.js homepage. This gives me a choice between the long-time support and the current version. In my case, I choose the recommended LTS version. Once the download is completed, I open the file. Here I accept the license agreement and accept the default values. At this stage you are probably wondering why we need Node.js when we are not using it for a server-side application. This is because Wappler needs Node.js to install the Firebase hosting environment. After about 20 seconds the installation is complete. Although Wappler states that I need to restart Wappler, in my experience it is best to restart the computer. I have restarted my computer and when we now check for Node.js, we see that it is now recognized. We also see a message that Docker has not been installed. Don't worry about that for now, this will be a future topic. Currently, the target is set at local. This means that we are using Wappler's built-in web server. To change this to the Firebase server, we need to change the hosting type. Click on the project settings icon and in the project settings dialog go down to hosting type. In the dropdown, choose Google Firebase hosting. Notice the change in the web root folder. The server requires a project ID. Click on Firebase projects. This opens the Firebase welcome page. Here we create a project. The name for our project is Aardvark. No surprise here. A project identifier has been suggested by Firebase. This identifier will be used as the URL for the Firebase host. This cannot be changed once the project has been created. But note that you can also add any custom domain to it, so you are not bound to that name but it is a nice way to start. The default name or your custom domain get automatic SSL certificates, so you don't have to do anything to build secure sites. The first attempt at changing the project identifier has not succeeded. The second attempt has the stamp of approval. This means the live URL for the site will be anteaters-ardvark.web.app. In the next step, you can enable Google Analytics if you want, but I will switch it off. I can now proceed to create the project. After about 30 seconds we see that the project is ready. Click on the continue button. This takes us to the project overview page. Here I click on the cog icon and choose project settings. Copy the project identifier and close the browser. Back in Wappler, paste the project identifier for the project ID. Choose yes for Wappler to apply the changes. There is some background activity that changes the target to development and reconfigures the file structure. A green icon will show when Wappler is done. When I open the file manager, we can see that the files have been placed in a folder named public. From now on, I will refer to the public folder as the site root. A couple of Firebase files have been placed in the project folder. In other words, they have been placed above the site root. When we view the site in the browser, we notice that the server port has changed from the previous 1234.56 to 5000. We also notice that there is no navigation or footer. This is because Firebase does not have an application server. This means that the server side includes that we used for the navigation and footer, no longer work. To fix this, Open the navigation include file. Change to code view. Select and copy the code. Open the index file in code view. Select the include file line and replace it with the copied code.
Do the same for the footer. When we view the page in the browser we can now see the navigation bar in the footer. Repeat the process for the about and contact pages. Now that I have read the project of server side includes, I can delete the includes folder. We no longer need it. So far, I have made grateful use of the Firebase local server. I can do any modifications of the website while the target is in development mode. When I am ready to deploy the site to the live site, I click on the deploy button. Sit back and relax while Wappler performs its magic. When the upload has finished, I close the local web server window and change the target to production. To view the remote site, I click on the live site icon. We now see the live site. Close the browser. We can also see the live site when I click on the open in browser icon. Our site is now available for the world to see. All of this was made possible by Wappler and Google Firebase without going through complicated site configurations. More shocking. This was accomplished without spending one penny. I hope that you enjoyed the video. When Wappler releases more functionality, I will continue this series. Please stay tuned. Better still, subscribe to the Wappler channel and get notified when new videos appear. My name is Ben Plesier and don't forget the Wappler community or documentation. I will leave the links below.